I don't even want to. We're live. I was about to say some wild ass. We're live. All right, bitch. Let's be professional. What's going on, guys? We're here after the Super Bowl. San Francisco 49ers have just been defeated by the Kansas City Chiefs 25 to 22 in an overtime loss. And I'm here with Vish and we're here to talk about it, man. Uh, it's rough. Um, to state the obvious. Uh, but first and foremost, before we get into before we get into the game, uh, you know, we want to lead with class. I want to congratulate the Kansas City Chiefs on winning the Super Bowl this year. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Hard fought, hard earned. You know, there you go. Yeah, Let's move on have, to us. They have an outstanding defense. Spags is such a great situational play caller. The way he's able to get the game plan down to certain key downs where he has timed up blitzes and timed up pressures to be able to get you out of there. It's so impressive. And yeah, Mahomes is the best I've ever seen, man. The way he finds answers in a football game, the way he finds solutions, the way he never gets down, the physical talent, play after play, he he's one of one. Um yeah, they they they're they're gonna keep doing this. Like this is great for them. Let's let's get into you know that this was pretty heartbreaking, coach. This was devastating. Yeah, 34 for 46, 333 yards, uh 7.2 average, two touchdowns and one pick, uh um 99.3 rating for Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he uh um he had a complete body of work today, if you really want to be honest. I mean, he threw a pick early. Came back, took, still kept slinging. Um, definitely kept himself uh, out of the pocket. Looked downfield. Um, you know, he put the team on his back. I mean, really in the first half, uh, uh, Travis Kelsey had one target, one catch, and one yard for the entire first half. You know, they were um, they were trying their best. Uh, uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Fish, what were we doing on offense? What were I mean the defense, let's just get to it. The defense showed up, Fish. God damn it. They played out of their minds. This Not only as a unit, but singularly they played Chase Young showed up. Javon Hargraves showed up. Oren Burke showed up. Logan Ryan showed up. Tashawn Gibson, even though Tashawn Gibson missed that pick that he could have, he still could have kept going, but Tashawn Gibson is the guy who definitely came in and helped in the run. The defense showed up. Kinlaw, they Kinlaw did their played job. His, Kinlaw, played his, Kinlaw played his butt off. Given Jesus Christ, well. Devon Nick, Kinlaw played Nick, his ass Nick, off. Nick Bosa was probably the best player on the field for the second Super Bowl in a row. Fuck! Uh, coach, this, is, this was if, if you and I could have written up a situation for the 49ers defense. The last two weeks, all I've been saying is tell your defensive line. Look at Donovan Smith. Look at Juwan Taylor. Look at Allegretti. You can dominate this game. You we can win the 49ers the Super Bowl. Front. And they we did dominated it. up front. Offensive line and defensive line, we dominated. We got caught being too cute, man. Run the ball. Where's Jordan Mason? Christian McCaffrey fumbling early in that game, Vish, was the worst thing that could have happened to Kyle. He walked away from him. He did. He walked away from him. He stopped trusting Christian, and Christian had to get it together later in the game. During the game, I tweeted at the time. I said, look, man, I'll tell you. I, I, I tweeted it. I said, one quarter down, and CMC has six carries for 22 yards. That's a 24-carry, 88-yard day for 3.8 yards per carry. That ain't it. I tweeted that after the first quarter. 
after the first quarter. What did Christian McCaffrey finish with today? 22 carries, 80 yards, and 3.6 yards a carry with a long of 11 yards and zero TDs. That ain't it. They won. They deserve to win. But it hurts. We were the better team tonight. We haven't seen these boys in a while. It's hard to just know this. It's hard to know. You know, it's Patrick Mahomes. They're the Chiefs. You see them playing other teams. And it's just hard to match them up one for one. But seeing these guys on the field for on the field for us, pound for pound, they weren't a better team than us, Vish. They, they weren't were, a better team. They were situationally the better team. Every key yeah. down in this game, they made the play, right? The third downs that they had to hold the 49ers at the field goal, they did that. When they got the turnover, the Niners got an early turnover in this third quarter. What did they do with it? They went three and out with it. That was a momentum-changing point in this game because the Chiefs coming out of half turned the football over. Terrible throw from Patrick Mahomes. There's one big mistake in the game. You go three and out. The Niners, they make their one big mistake because both teams had a fumble that canceled each other out with the McCaffrey fumble and the Pacheco fumble. You make your one big mistake in the game, which is the ball inadvertently hits Darrell Luther's foot on a punt, and Ray-Ray McLeod goes to pick it up. By the way, he should have not picked that ball up. He should have fallen on top of the ball and secured yeah. possession. He goes Fall on the ball. the ball. Trying to he advance goes, the ball is not what you do in those situations. He goes and picks up the ball, and he tries to make a play. He fumbles it again. They recover it. What do they do? First play off the turnover. They capitalize. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, nice cover three beater. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, touchdown. Situationally, they were a better football team than the 49ers. This was 2019 all over again, rolled up in a different flavor pack and served up to us. The Niners yeah. defense dominated. They had Patrick dominated. Spook, spook for the first 3.3 quarters of this game once again. And their offense, <laughs> we, we've seen this game script with Patrick Mahomes in Super Bowls three different times. Two times the 49ers have lost this Super Bowl, and one time the Bucs won this Super Bowl. When they are playing poorly in the first half, you can't give them lifelines. You can't beat up 10-0 in a ball game that you should be up by at least two scores. You can't have penalties that end a good drive. You can't have fumble in opponent's territory. When you do those things, you give Patrick Mahomes life, and eventually he finds solutions in the game. What was the difference in the one game the Bucs beat them? Because in all three of those games, the Niners' defensive line dominated their offensive line in 2019. The Bucs' defensive line dominated their offensive line in 2020. And the 49ers' defensive line dominated once again today in 2024. What was the difference between the one game that they lost versus the two they won versus the Niners? The offense capitalized when their defense was playing well. The Bucs put them away in that first half. And that was the big problem with this game. As it got closer, as it got closer, yeah, there were some great drives from Shanahan. There were some great plays from Purdy and clutch moments on second and long and third and long to keep the game alive. But in a tight back and forth ball game against Patrick Mahomes, you're already losing that game probably 60, 70% of the time. You have to get ahead on this team. They got ahead, but this team, they kept them around. They kept them in the game. They could have put them away in the first half. There were so many dagger drives. There were so many dagger drives. My God. The, this was the, the drive team. after the turnover where CMC doesn't even touch the ball. Like so many dagger drives where we just settled down and were comfortable with what they were giving us. I Before this game, I, you know, I made a metaphor likening this game to boxing. And, uh, yo, when you're boxing somebody, it's a science. There's levels of my expertise that you have to show me that you can handle before I get to anything else, because you literally can knock anybody out with the jab. And if you can't get past my jab, man, I'm not throwing power punches. I'm not going to take you to the ropes. I'm going to keep you in the middle of the ring and I'm just going to jab your ass until I knock you out. They cannot handle our jab. It was clear that they could not stop the run. And we had momentum and many issues during the game where we could not, they could not stop the run. And Kyle went away from it. 
I do not understand why he is so fixated in getting the ball down the field when right. we had the dominant we had the dominant but, but advantage I, but, of them go, up go front. Through this, go through the second quarter, right? Because if your argument is when at the start of the third quarter, the three the two possessions where they had zero runs, three and out and three and out. If you go look at that drive, they kind of sequenced themselves out of running the ball. They had five possessions in the first half. I think they had three first down runs or three first down passes and two first down runs to start their possessions in the first half. So it wasn't like they were consistently running the ball on first down on every possession. At the second half, first down, they have an incompletion on their first drive right after the turnover, the Jair Brown pick. Then they have a second and 15 because I think it was Aaron Banks who has a fault. It was Spencer Burford, maybe, who has a false mm -hmm. start penalty. False they start. get into second and 15. Second and 15 isn't really a rundown. You get out of it third and long. Again, not a rundown. Next drive, first play of the game, I think Chris Jones, massive negative play on first down. You go to throw the ball. Maybe that was the first down you run the ball, but then second and 18, third and 18, you're not really in a position to run the football. So I, I understand that criticism, but they, they got off 30 runs in this game. 30 runs, but our, the number one rusher in the NFL averaged 3.6 a carry, rushed for 20 times and only 80 yards. That doesn't look like – I understand that you wanted to rush 30 times in this game, and I get that. But there's a difference in looking at the way those 30, those 30 carries were divvied up. And it didn't necessarily, it looked like at time, let me put it like this. We ran the ball 30 times, right? Was there any time in the game where you said to yourself, man, we should be running the ball right here. Why aren't we running the ball? Yeah. The, I mean, I mean, that would be the first down right, right off the pick. Like you mm -hmm. get the ball in the second half, you stop them, you get a pick. Like this is the like for all of us watching the game, we understand momentum's about to flip, right? Mahomes mm -hmm. just had a field goal drive. He's back in it. You shut him out in the first half. The second half, that first down, that was probably the one. Hey, get in 21 personnel, get heavy. Let's just run it on first down. Let's play it safe. Let's get ourselves into second and seven, second and eight, take a deep breath and go from there. But mm -hmm. again, he didn't do it there. And and the problem is for him. He when he misses on one round call run call, sometimes situationally it compounds where they have a negative play and they're out of running the football for the rest of the drive. And on those two possessions, that's what happened because second down, you, okay, you want to run it on second and second and ten, but then all of a sudden you have a false start penalty and now you're in second and fifteen. Well, you should have probably run it just on that first down right out of the interception. How about it? Just, right. That that's where that's where I, I I would say that they missed a run, but more coach. Early in this game, they beat themselves. They Christian McCaffrey, their best player, fumbled on a drive in plus territory. You can't do that. Trent Williams had back-to-back -back penalties that ruined a good drive. You can't be up 10-0 in a game that you've dominated the first quarter and a half. Not against this quarterback. I mean, situationally, they uh they got us. I mean, I mean, you gotta ask the real questions. Did we choke in this one? I'd say, yeah. I'd say we choked this game away. Is it choking if we've seen the same game with the 49ers like six different times in the playoffs or four different times now? Is it choking? This was 2019 wrapped up with a different bow. Yeah. Better yeah. quarterback play. Way better quarterback play. Brock Purdy played way better in this game than Jimmy Garoppolo played in 2019. But he it was did. basically the same game. Key possession, Chris Jones gets pressure. Does that remind you of anything? This is on Kyle. <laughs> I hate to do it, man. This is on him, man. Uh, Coach Wilkes called the game in his life. Um, I mean, it, it's it's so funny how the tables have turned. Like, in one instance, <laughs> there was a narrative asking whether or not we should keep. There was an actual article with the with the with the with the poll asking whether or not we should keep coach Wilkes. We should let him go, uh, keep him for one more year or go get somebody new. And it's like, after today's performance, you're kind of hoping that coach Wilkes doesn't start thinking it like that about us. Like, you know, like after today's performance, we're kind of looking at coach Wilkes like, Hey man, we kind of need you to stay. We kind of need you here. Um, Jake Moody, he was up and down, but for a rookie in a Super Bowl, I give him an A. I give him an A. I give him an A. He was impressive. I mean, I understand the missed field goal, you know, but we lost by we lost by three. We didn't lose by one.
Um, they scored. Um, now I will say, Darrell Luter Jr. and that special team snafu on the punt return uh, that got muffed. That was that was gutting. Um, and I just feel like there, we just weren't polished in certain areas of the game. Special teams like the muffed punt. Uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey fumbling early, Trent Williams jumping off sides, Trent Williams holding, Trent Williams missing on blocks. Coach, um, I'll give it to you simple. This game came down to one thing, 3 of 12 versus 9 to 19. One team was 3 of 12 on third down and couldn't sustain drives when they had to, drives that were in bad situations. We saw the stat earlier in the game, right? At one point in the game, their average down and distance on third downs was third and 12 plus to go which means that they were getting constant negatives on first and second down, and, and Patrick Mahomes and them were 9-19 and 19 on third down. They were extending drives late in this game when they had to. It, it's, it's brutal. It, it's, it's, it's unreal, Vish. And, 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 and at what point do you just – I mean, where do we go from here, man? I mean, obviously we have – obviously we have the uh, – we got the draft coming, uh, but – All right, let's grade it out. Offensive line, let's grade it. Let's do it. Let's. I, I want to be sterile because I feel like if we if we keep going hardcore, like it's just going to be way too like inflammatory and emotional. So let's just try to stay like to yeah. the to like to the letter of the law. So much, so somewhat. Let's be professional. Nobody's hurting more than these guys. They actually played and lost the game. So, um, how would you grade the offensive line? I thought they played average, dude. A lot of people yeah. are gonna look later in the game when pressure got to them and look at them. And I, but I'm gonna be like, man, I, I looked at this Chief pass rush and I thought they held up for longer points in this game than I expected them to. Yeah, Spags cooked up some pressures late. The McDuffie pressure was serious because that was so never, sneaky good, yeah, wasn't it? McD and McDuffie, the way he never showed a single key that he was coming and how quickly he tripped. That was slick. Yeah, McDuff <laughs> McDuffie's a special player. I don't know who won Super Bowl MVP, but McDuffie was the best Chiefs player in this game. He dominated this game um, in every aspect that a slot DB can play. He was phenomenal. But, yeah, that that that's what it was. I, I thought they were average, dude. I gave him a C. I thought they got moving <laughs> when they needed to. Like, I was like, nah, I three just made me laugh. <laughs> He said, man, I, I grade like what? We I feel lost. Like that. Right. I feel like that. Like, I'm like, like yo, yeah, I'm trying. Like, what is I'm this? trying, bro. We're trying, man. Like, I understand, man. Like, I feel the same way. I feel the this same is, fucking way, bro. This is like, like this is like when you're looking for a certain threshold. Like, you know, you're looking to get a 90% on a test to get an A. And then you get 85% and we're sitting here and breaking down why we got 80%. Who cares? <laughs> Who gives a fuck? I, I, I love this comment. I'm trying to fake the funk too, y'all, dog. But I, I love this comment because I feel the same way. Like, what the fuck am I going to give a good conversation about right now, man? Like, this was the game of all games. Um, This is, right now, this regime is a footnote. It's a footnote. Not only did we not win, but we came back and we lost to the team that ousted us out, who we crowed about for years that we wanted to see again. That Jake, that that George Kittle made manifest to himself out loud, saying that he will be back. And it's just like they lost the same game again. The same game. I don't care. You can give me all the nuances you want. This was basically the same game as 2019 wrapped up in a different picture. The variables in the game played out the same way. The end of the half. Are you kidding me? Why aren't you using your timeouts? Why are you I know not somebody, preserving your time? I know somebody who uh, I really respect. And they told me that they ran into somebody who's a very serious person and in sports. And uh, he just ran into him and he asked him, he said, you know, hey, man, like, who do you uh, who do you got winning the game? And his reply was. Uh, the Chiefs. And he said it like really matter of factly and it offended me. And I was like, why did he say it like that? Like and he said he was like, because the Niners are a gimmick. He's like the Niners are a gimmick. Said they've their their coach 
is a gimmick. Like he he finds ways how to be good, but he's not actually good. And I didn't really have anything to say to him after he said that. But it's like, I feel like in certain ways, Kyle has had to learn how to be like clever and have ingenuity in how he calls plays. And it served him really well. And it's and it's advanced him through his career. But I feel like through his pursuit of getting a good team, he's never really taken a step back to understand exactly how good his team truly is. And I feel like Kyle has been predisposed so much to be a MacGyver that he doesn't know how to be a master mechanic. Right? Like he knows how to fashion things together. He knows how to piece together defi- uh, things where he can exploit deficiencies and vulnerabilities. But when it comes to having a real feel of the power of your team and your offense and how to manage that, and that's your job, just giving, just being the greatest facilitator of all time, I think that's where he struggles because. He doesn't know what to do with his hands. When- let, let, me make, let me add some sense to your point because I, I think people are going to miss it here. I, I think the perfect example for your point is Tony Romo had a quote. I think it was after the third and four that they got stopped on the McDuffie blitz. And he said, know who you're going against. Yeah, they didn't show pressure that entire look. But what is Steve Spagnola's M.O.? What is he going to do in a tight situation? And that's, that's that's the coaching that's missing in Kyle Shanahan. It's the basic common sense of who are you going against in that moment? Forget he the can't X's break the fourth O's. wall, man. Forget, forget the deeper level X's and O's in that situation. It's just as simple as who am I playing? What do they tend to do? Because you contradict that to the big third down the Chiefs had versus the Niners. Steve Wilkes had not brought pressure the entire game. And they went zero. And guess who was ready for them going zero? Mahomes. He checked right to McKinnon. They got McKinnon on a little slip out against zero. And they pick up the first down. I think it was third and four fairly easily. That's the difference in the game. And that's small things when it comes to coaching. The guy didn't blitz the entire game. And Andy Reid knew his MO in that moment. He's going to bring pressure. and We're going to have an answer for it. Yeah. Uh, Kyle got out coached. Um it seemed like everybody came to coach Bacal, man. Um, offensively, you know, three for 12 on third down, the constant passing on first down. You know, I feel like Kyle got PTSD by Christian fumbling early. Um, he never really went back to him. But then at the same time, he went to him eight yard, eight receptions for 80 yards in a TD. I mean, dude, um, he had 30 touches in the game. They, they rode him. They rode him hard, but I, I mean – Run them. I, I would argue they didn't ride anybody else. Like, I would argue that when they needed to go to Brandon Ayuk in this game, two times they got him matched up on Justin Reed and Legereus Sneed. But I didn't feel like there was an effort, or excuse me, Justin Reed and Mike Edwards, the two safeties. But I didn't feel like, oh, there was an effort to feature um uh, uh Brandon Ayuk in this game. I felt like Debo put in more time running in motion in this game than he did making an impact he, on this than game. Than he did actually and doing right, anything. Debo was Debo. decoy Samuel he today. Never had, he never had a rhythm. He never had an energy. You could never feel Debo's presence in this game versus the first half of 2019 when you could feel Debo's presence all over that game. And then Kittle, Kittle was ghost down in this game. 11 targets, three receptions for 33 yards. Uh, a longer 12 yards and zero touchdowns for Debo Samuel. George Kittle, three targets, two receptions, four yards, two yards. Uh, and an average, four long. I mean, these guys Juan, were in IA. But this is what, but you know what? This wait, is wait, what wait, happens, Vish. Though, real quick, because we got to give him his due at least while we're on, while we're at the place. Wait, Let's just know, get him. Get oh, good, we'll get to him? Okay, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. We're going to get to him, Vish. I watched go the ahead. game with you. We're going to get to him. Okay, let's go. Go for it. This is what I'm saying is where, you know, when you get so caught up in motherfucking scheme and you're sitting here trying to get your best guys open, what happens is, is that you can get caught in the vacuum of trying to understand, well, Christian is winning his matchup. So let's go ahead and tilt the entire game plan to Christian. And it's like George got three targets in this game. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, B.A., he got six targets, three receptions for 49 yards. And I'm going to tell you right now, man, was working. Christian, Kansas City was Kansas City was betting on their secondary against our offense. They were daring Brock Purdy to throw. They really were. They bet their secondary against every offense. That's why the Buffalo Bills, a team whose entire issue is that they throw the ball every down with their quarterback, even ran the football against this team. Yeah. Um. Th- this one, this one sucks, man. This one fucking sucks. I, 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 dude, I, I said before the game, Juwan Jennings is my X factor. I thought he would be a tough matchup for the Chiefs. Did I said I he was my X factor too. Bowl? Did I expect him to have a Super Bowl MVP performance? The guy was unbelievable all the way up till the fact that he drew the key holding penalty on Trent McDuffie on the drive they came back into the game on. We got to pay Jawan. Jawan showed up. He's physical. He one more year. I think they have one more year. Of I him. mean, uh, Jawan did his motherfucking thing today, man. I had him as my X Factor, too. Funny uh, uh, funny is not. I mean, believe it or not, um, I had him as my X Factor. Um, I had Randy Gregory as my defensive X Factor. I really don't. I mean, I, I could pick apart the defense. I could talk about Javarius Ward missing on the ghost motion by uh, – uh, by uh, McCole Hardman. I mean, we, we really could go at the defense, but um, I mean, Chase Young. Look, look, look. Hey, Chase. I want to issue an apology. I did not have you playing well this game because of your effort. Sue me. I stand corrected. Chase Young had a game Chase Young held that. You want to talk about lane integrity? All right, let me tell you something. Offensive line is always predicated on steps, right, Vish? Right? Especially when you're running on inside and outside zone. You want everybody stepping in unison, right? You need those play steps so you can get the right angles going downhill. And hit your right landmarks. Exactly. And defensively, Vish, it was almost as if they were they had practiced so hard on shifting the line of scrimmage and keeping lane integrity to make sure that the pocket moved with Patrick Mahomes so he mm-hmm. never broke outside of the pocket. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was very evident early in the game, man. I mean, bro, I'm going to tell you, bro, the defense – chose the right game to play out of their minds. This was by far their best game of the season. And, and we by put it on far. Them, right? We put it on them. We said before the game, every content creator, everybody who talked about this game said the Niners defensive line is underperformed. In this game, they got to play out of their minds and go get them. And top mm-hmm. to bottom in that defensive line, Nick Bosa was the best 49er in this game. He was outstanding. Nick Once Bosa again, was all two two, over the place. Two, two for two in Super Bowls where he's been unbelievable. Chase Young was terrific. Randy Gregory played his butt off. Javon Hargrave arguably played his best game as a 49er. Eric Armstead was superb in this game. Robert Beal had a couple of quality rushes. Javon Kinlaw was fantastic. Kevin Givens played a strong game. Top to bottom, they did what you asked. They gave it to you. They showed they up. They gave it to you. They showed you up. That's why I can't, I can't talk about this defense, Vish. This defense did exactly what we needed them to do today. They held the greatest quarterback on planet Earth to 25 points. What else do you need? They did their jobs, man. People are right? asking what happens when it comes down to the last drive. Nobody's without, stopping Mahomes in that situation. Here's my problem. With, this is my without problem. Without Drake Greenlaw. Without Drake Greenlaw. Without, without Drake Greenlaw, Jair please Brown. Say that. Please say that. Logan Ryan played terrific at nickel. I said after the game, I, this was a funny take. I didn't realize it was going to happen. I said, wow, Logan Ryan played great in 10 snaps at nickel. I would play him at nickel and keep Lenore on the outside and don't play Ambry Thomas. They did exactly that. So I'll pat myself on the back. But people are asking about the last drive. If you're in a situation where you're down, you're up by three and you got to stop Mahomes. You've already lost the game. That's what they people were scraping. Don't yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You're listen, that, listen, in listen. That back listen. And forth situation with Mahomes, the game is over. You're not Let me tell you something. in that situation. You Let me needed tell you to be able to hold your lead when you got your lead. And when you make mistakes, 
When you make mistakes and your defense is playing outstanding and you're only up 10 points instead of being up 15 or 20, the way the Tampa Bay Bucks were in 2020, you're going to lose the game because Mahomes will run you down. He's Mahomes. Hey, let me tell you something. Anybody who thinks that the defense – hold on. Anybody who thinks that this game was lost because the defense was the last unit on the field, you don't know the game. Because us scoring those three points in overtime was our demise. Mm -hmm. That was when we lost the game. It wasn't the last drive. It wasn't when you put Patrick Mahomes on the field against a dog-tired fucking defense and you think that Patrick Mahomes isn't just going to find a way to get it done. That's not when you start pulling out. That's not when you start recording to figure out what accountability right, looks like. Right. It's already over at that point. It's over. Even, even with your defense playing at its best, even if you had the 2000 Ravens with modern rules and the way that quarterback has played in every one of these situations, dude, it's dude, that's why it ticks me off so much. The Tampa Bay game, the first Niners Super Bowl, it's the same thing. Except the Tampa Bay game, the difference is they got such a big lead on them early that there was never a chance for Mahomes to come back. They capitalized on the Chiefs' early mistakes and got up so so large in terms of the lead that Mahomes wasn't coming back. If you put Mahomes in a situation where it's drive for drive, and the defense is tired, and they've worn him down. This is why he's Patrick Mahomes. This is what he does. You're not stopping Patrick Mahomes. Who stopped Patrick Mahomes in that situation? Who? Nobody, man. Nobody. Uh, It's like when people go to the Emmanuel Sanders play. They lost that Super Bowl 10 plays before the Emmanuel Sanders play. They lost that Super Bowl when they're up 20-7, to 17, and Garoppolo doesn't throw the ball to Kittle on third and five. When you're down by four to Mahomes in a Super Bowl, game's already over. We back it up. We'll turn it off. We'll go to sleep. You're not winning yeah. then. Nobody wins then. <laughs> um, a lot of our a lot of our guys didn't show up. Christian McCaffrey, he was there, but I feel like Christian McCaffrey just showed up just by uh by happenstance, just by default. They for they brute forced him the ball. Um, he had eight targets through the air. Uh, eight targets for eight receptions, which means that there's a lot of, I wonder how many of those balls got caught behind the line of scrimmage, which were quite a few. Uh, he had 22 balls behind the line of scrimmage. Tons. He had 22 carries for 80 yards again for 3.6, zero TDs. Uh, I thought that there was an element where Brock could be a little bit more mobile in this game. He only had three carries for 12 yards, um, with a, with a long of nine. The team um, speed, the team speed today of these guys versus Green Bay, the way Willie Gray, Gay, Nick Bolton, McDuffie run run sideline to sideline was a big difference. Brock's mm -hmm. mobility. Brock actually made a couple of really phenomenal drive extending plays late in this game, but early in this game, it was like the Dallas playoff game two years ago when he was trying to run and they were running him down because they were mm -hmm. taking away early looks. The Niners struggled. Other than Juwan Jennings, they struggled to separate versus man coverage. McDuffie mm -hmm. and Snead had Ayuk and Debo on lock and key. Yeah. Uh, we want to talk about uh, Brock. Um, how do you feel about Brock's performance today? I mean, how would you grade the performance for Brock? I'd give Brock a B- minus today. Um, maybe a C+. Plus. Uh I feel as though that he got the ball out, but it just going against Patrick Mahomes. You see the difference. There's levels to this. Um, you see where Brock was trying his best to operate an offense that would be that had been given to him. But there were many instances where Brock was trying to do his best to improvise and take care of the ball at the same time. And I really commend him for choosing to take care of the ball instead of trying to do more. Uh, that offensive yeah. line didn't help Brock out at all today. No. There was many no. times where he was under duress. Um, I can tell you there were many times where Brock was letting the ball go, like literally within a split second of getting hit. Uh, the right side of our offensive line did not have a good day. Colton McKibbitz, Constantly on skates. Uh, George Karlaftis had his day against uh, Colton McKibbage. You'll see it when the film comes out. John Feliciano, um, he struggled before he even got hurt. I am a little confused about 
the rotation at right guard. And it seems to be something that they just are stuck with where Spencer Burford seems to be wait, wait, in on wait, passing. Can we, can we hit on Brock real quick before we yeah. get to the offensive line? Because I, what I wanted to say about Brock is I thought he was fine in this game. Like, I didn't think I looked at this game and I would blame Brock. But I think we got the full Brock Purdy experience. We saw that he's evidently a way better than the quarterback that they came into this game with in 2019, right? He played a much cleaner game. And when there were opportunities to make plays in this game, he made them. But we also saw his limitations because there were points in this game where we needed Brock Purdy to do something that was beyond just the scope of what was going on in that game. We needed Brock Purdy to put on his Superman cape at times, and he doesn't have a Superman cape to put he on. He doesn't that have a cape. Issue. And and mm-hmm. you can I and you know what though? You know what though? What I what I'm never gonna blame him for not having that Superman cape. They built this team for this team to be able to produce around him. If you ask, if if we're gonna criticize Brock Purdy and say we're not going to give him enough credit because he does his job only at this capacity. Then when he does his job once again at this capacity and the team around him doesn't play to this capacity again, I'm not going to sit here and blame Brock Purdy for that. Do I wish he had a Superman cape? Sure, but I, I thought he was fine in this game. I thought they 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 could have won with this Brock Purdy performance. They really could have. He played well enough for them to win this game. Yeah, I mean, I, I just felt like there was a traditional way to really go at these guys. Pound for pound, hat for a hat. I feel like once we, once I saw that we were that we actually could deal with them up front, offensively running the ball, right? There's a different trajectory when your offensive line is moving backwards and in pass protection versus getting downhill and running the ball. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, getting downhill, running inside of the tackles, running off tackle. I mean, we were having early success. I just thought, like, dude. We got to score first. Points are at a premium. There was a time in the game where, like, the literal momentum for the game was up for grabs early in the first half. You know, I just – I felt like Kyle would have just realized that, all right, we've got a better team than these guys, and it's really not about scheme right now. It's about imposing our will. And, you know, I, not running the ball with – you know, Jordan Mason didn't even get any carries in this. I I, Kyle fooled the fuck out of me. To get carries, come on. We're talking what, about a third string running what, back in the Super what, Bowl. Come on. Listen, man. I'm not talking about a third string running back. I'm talking about a running, a different style of running back. There's a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I, I understand. Okay, okay. Yeah, like I hear what you're saying. Where you like, yeah, he may be third on the depth. I'll give you that, Vish. But looking, where I'm coming from is that, that he that is power. not that style. They are a different style okay. of runner, and uh. For me, I just felt like once you realize that they couldn't that they couldn't necessarily stop our run game, I expected Kyle to get a lot more creative. Like, where are the now screens with Debo, the bubble screens with Debo, right? Getting him the ball quick. I saw that with Christian McCaffrey, you know, um, getting him the ball. You know, I, I, I saw him trying to run the ball between the tackles with Debo, but I got to be honest with you, man. For what Kyle sets up for Debo, the fact that you just can't line him up and he can't go out and get open on his own, that's a little bit of a liability, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being honest with you. Like, that's that's a straight up liability. The fact that if Debo Samuel I'll, I'll can't give you an opposite point. I'll give you an opposite point because I don't think it was an issue in this particular game. I think the Debo issue that you're bringing might be a universal issue. But in this game, dude, they've Sneed and McDuffie have done this to every receiver duo in the sport. They literally lock them up. My issue is why are we going at them? Every third down, why is the ball being thrown at Leg- or Legarius Sneed or Trent McDuffie? Juwan Jennings, when he had Joshua Williams on him or Justin Watson, dominated. Why are they even trying those guys? Yeah. Did, did they try Mooney Ward or Diamond or Lenore once in this game? Did they, no. Did they try mm. Mooney Ward once in this game? No. They stayed away from him. They went to Travis. They threw the ball one time to Travis Kelsey in the first half because they were covering him with either Gibson or Fred Warner. When they started throwing the ball to Travis Kelsey was when they were able to isolate him with Oren Burks. When they threw the ball to Rashi Rice, they were able to get him in the slot against Logan Ryan. Free release, man coverage, you get a crossing route versus pressure, free. They never did that. Like So I, I understand what you're saying about Debo, but in this game, why are we trying that? Why are we trying to see if Debo and, McCaff- and McDuffie can have a little one-on-one battle on the outside? 
We didn't need to do that in this game. We didn't need to make third and nine Debo versus McDuffie or Ayuk versus Sneed. There's way too much talent on this team. Yeah. Juwan Jennings was unbelievable. Juwan Jennings, I mean, he, Juwan, if we win this game, Juwan Jennings the MVP. He's my vote for MVP. Um, if we would have won, I would say Nick Bosa, but okay, sure, he he would, would probably win it because he had the stats. Nick Bosa, yeah. I don't think had the stats today. I mean, losing Gene Greenlaw hurt. I mean, what? How did how did you yeah, feel yeah. about our defense? How did you feel about our defense moving forward after we lost uh, Dre? Dude, I mean, I, I felt I, good. I, it was a three and out right afterwards. I like the Debbie Downer on Oren Burks. I thought he was. This is the best game I've or, seen Oren Burks. Play. Oren fucking Burks played his ass off, man. Um. I, I I was even talking about going five down against them. You know what else? You know what else surprised me? We did very well against their run game. Isaiah Pacheco didn't dominate his, uh, the way I thought he did. He had 18 carries for 59 yards. Um well, Holmes was th- pretty special running. Yeah, yeah. And but you know, that's something that we had to look out for. But you know, offensively, you know, if, if you just want to look at team stats. They put up 455 total yards on us. 75 plays. Uh, Like you mentioned, three for 12 for third downs, nine for 19 for third downs for them. Uh, Passing yards, 272 to 325 yards. We only rush for 110 yards on these guys. That, that shit hurts. That hurts. Mahomes we could have did so everything. much more on the ground against them, man. Mahomes, but that's where the Mahomes Superman cape comes in, right? His Superman cape in this game was his legs. At every critical junker, juncture in this game, he was using his legs to just get first downs. The one disappointing moment for me for the defense, you want me to tell you, Coach? There was an early Mahomes run in the game, and I thought Diamador Lenore had a chance to smoke him. And Diamador Lenore kind of stepped up and Mahomes kind of ran him over. That was the only moment in this game, not the only moment, but I, that was a moment in this game that I was actually like, ah, disappointed in this defense, especially because we saw Lenore smoke off, right? So we saw Lenore like isn't scared of doing that. And I thought, oh man, like that was a chance. Like give Mahomes, oh. but they, they miss Greenlaw's energy for sure. Greenlaw is one of their best players. It's hard to look at Burks and say he couldn't have played much better though because he really played his behind off. Yeah, man, it's it fucking this shit sucks, man. Um, we're talking you about know, Mahomes as the better old line. I don't know. I thought I saw both quarterbacks under pressure for the majority. Both of the quarterbacks game. struggled. I, I, I mean, Niners defensive line had pressure on every play. Yeah, man. pressure, man. We had pressure. It did at least going downhill, running the ball in, t- in between the tackles and off tackles. Our, our offensive line, hey, we had success against them. They weren't hey, they hey, weren't hey, juggernauts coach, up front. Coach, let me ask you this. You take Mahomes out and you look at the way he played to avoid pressure and ran and did all of that, and you take their offensive line and that performance against the Niners defensive line, and you say that was the Chiefs defensive line doing to the Niners offensive line, everybody in here would come out and say the Niners offensive line sucked in that game. Sucked. The only reason we're not saying the Chiefs offensive line sucked they won because they didn't have Joe Tooney. They didn't. Their two offensive tackles got dominated by every edge player that played for the 49ers in this game, including Robert Beal, who half of us forgot was on the roster. He had two quality rushes in this game against Donovan Smith. That goes to show you what their offensive line was. The only reason Ass. we're not talking about it is because of number 15. Yeah. Patrick Patrick Mahomes saved the day for them, but they offensive line is ass. They weren't good. Um, defense had a day, I mean, man. They were missing their best offensive linemen. And Craig Creed Humphrey snapped five or six times to you, to me, to there, to this, to that, to this. He was Every all over the place. Was low, high, yeah. I mean, but what got us is that they rushed for 100. They outgained us on the ground. I know. Mahomes, 130 man. to 110. The Chiefs, think about that. Think about that. The next time you talk about when people, you know what? I get all of these like weird ass comments. And I get these like, like hangers on sometimes, but not a lot, just a couple of times where people come at me and they say, they get mad at me when I say things like, we're a, we're a finesse team that plays a physical style of football. We're not really a physical team. And then you look at teams like 
the Chiefs who are just trying their hand at being efficient this year. Like it, it was like they were talking about it during the game this year. They're trying to change their identity. They're trying to t- tone things down and really lean on their defense. That's what we do. That's literally let's our identity. Let's go there. Cause let's go to identity, right? They what beat was- us with our own shit. Right. Right. Cause the majority of this game, the Niners offensive and defensive line actually controlled both lines of scrimmages. Yes. So it counted. In high leverage situations, who controlled the line of scrimmage late in this game? When it had it to be, when it had to be controlled, key downs, who controlled it? They did. Right? Mahomes read option. Yes. Right? Yes. I like I, Purdy, Chris Jones pressure, nickel sack. Williams takes the wide guy, B gap blitz. What are you gonna do? He's in his face right away. Yeah. I I just <laughs> Where do you go from here? The team is so good. I mean, we need a better offensive line. We got to draft a better offensive line. I mean, you feel for guys like Eric Armstead, uh, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, like the guy, like the day one guys. You feel bad for those guys, right? Um. You're gutted for a guy like Trent Williams and Christian McCaffrey where this is their first time going deep into the playoffs, let alone a Super Bowl. Um, And I feel like sometimes when you're on a journey, when you're trying to get to that last push, you need to be able to like let go in order to step forward. Like sometimes like it's not about what you put into the painting, but sometimes it's what you choose to leave out, what makes it a masterpiece. And I think it I think it's pretty evident that Kyle needs to take his hand off of the offense. Like not like fully, not like in a big way, but like as far as like, bro, we cannot run a scheme in the Super Bowl. Like this is match up football. This is hat on a hat, best on best football. And we cannot get caught up into running plays that best fit your play sequence. And some of the best guys on the field end up getting alienated and getting caught up in the wash because of it. Honestly, coach, I, I, I don't know what to say to this question. I really don't know, dude. Four out of five years, you can't get this close and then tell me that there's next year. At some point, next year doesn't come. I'm not if saying that, there's next year. I'm not oh, saying I'm that just, shit. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about you when I say you. I'm, I'm saying in general. At some point, next year doesn't come. Frankly, I'm I'm a little lost right now. I, 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 I thought I was more prepared for this result than I was. I, I'm really not prepared. Um, I don't know where this team goes. I think there's going to be more turnover than people expect. I think they need to get younger in some areas than people realize. And it's hard to get younger and rebuild a team and win two out of two Super Bowls, even though the Chiefs just did that. I mean, dude, four out of five chances you get this close. You can't keep missing your window like this. Sometimes your window just disappears. They've missed their window four times. And it, you know what, though? You know what, though, coach? It shows to people like me. It, it's a, it's, it, it shows, hey, somebody like me, you're an idiot. You know why? All I thought was the issue with, with this team was the quarterback. I'm an idiot. It's, I am Kyle. an idiot. It's I thought Kyle, the man. issue with this team was just the quarterback. And the quarterback did everything that I could have wanted number 10 to do it, this in one the ain't 2019 on Brock. game, in this game, and they lost the game in the same exact situation. Brock gave I'm us an it. Idiot. Brock gave us everything he could. This one ain't on Brock. You can't say a word about Brock. You know, you can sit here and, and you know, talk about plays and, you know, certain areas. You know, I'm gutted for... A Darrell Luter Jr., you got to feel horrible about a play like that. Greenlaw um, tearing his Achilles. like You got to feel horrible about a play like that. that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you got to feel absolutely gutted for John, John Feliciano going yeah. down. Debo. Uh, Debo going down. George going down and coming back. Jair Brown going down and coming back. Did did Jair Brown come back? I don't think he did. I don't think so. I didn't um. But uh, I said this in the summer. One of the things that I what one of the reasons why I loved uh, the whole Trey Lance uh, situation 
um, was because I felt like it was going to finally force Kyle to like coach instead of like being a glorified OC. And because when you coach, you have to kind of put your money where your mouth is. When you're an OC, you get to hide behind scheme and, and process. And there's so many, there's so much red tape in like that type of like numb binary world. But when you coach, it's more of a people business and being on the edge of the toughest decisions is your job, right? When you're a head coach, the tough decision is your job. And I feel like we still got the same scenario in Brock. Brock has done his level best. He's he's played above and beyond. And even looking at what Brock can do, it's kind of like, why are he you a mistake his- today, dude? He didn't make Brock. a mistake. He, he didn't. didn't make a mistake. It's like, why are you forcing this kid to try to win this game when you have the leading rusher in the NFL? Like, why are you doing this? Why do you think that just because Brock can handle can handle processing and what you want to dream up inside of your head, that that's the way it's going to play out on the field? Like, Kyle calls plays like, dude, Kyle calls plays like he never played before. It's like you call plays in this numb ass way where you just think because you put it on the field, guys are going to respond. You don't even look at like the the narrative around when you call certain things, man. He's just got it's almost like he's like coaching in a bubble like you don't feel the room right now. You don't feel the fact that you should run the ball on first down. You don't see your offensive line dominating in the run game early in the game. I understand what you got on your play sheet, my man, but run the ball. It's a rough one, man. It's a rough one, bro. You want you want to hit the supers you know, and get out? About this is that we're we have to be gutted by like this this Wait, utilization. Before you go there, last point on Kyle. The first half clock management. Once again, the guy, the guy yeah. who's obsessed with the uh, if I get the ball I at the end of the him. half, you have to get the ball last. Remember, it's not even yep. about lapping him. It's about the stat. This miscellaneous stat that he shares in interviews never gives us the specifics. Oh, there's this dumb stat. Like 95% of the time, the team that ends the ball with the half Wins the game. Well, guess who ended the ball with the half in this game? The Kansas City Chiefs. Why? Because Kyle Shanahan took, what was it, two timeouts into the half? Two timeouts. He wanted to to use them during the Usher concert. I don't know. But he took Mm -hmm. two two timeouts into the half. Why? Start using timeouts. Win the game with your offense. Yeah. Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah, seriously. And Jen, Jen admission, by the way. I've seen your comments on Romo. I'll I'll save the Romo ranting for another day. Oh my God, he was insufferable. In this yo, Jin, yo, Jin is my man for this comment, bro. <laughs> no, I said that. You didn't hear me. Oh, uh, yeah, nah. That's why he said that. Nah, I mean, bro. I just this one's not on. This one isn't on Brock. It's not on the defense. You can't. I feel like the football gods got us. Karma's a bitch. Um, they got us dead set to rights. Um, you can't blame this on the defense. You can't blame this on Coach Wilkes. You know, you can't blame this on the quarterback. You can't blame it on Trey Lance. You can't blame it on Jimmy Garoppolo. <laughs> like, I'll blame it on Jimmy G. Everybody's gone. It's like, it's Kyle, man. It's Kyle. That offense was anemic at points during this se- during this game. Um, and you had to ask yourself, is this is what you drummed up? He just you doesn't know. You had it, dude. You had this one. They yeah. had the game until they didn't. When yeah. this game, hey, let me ask you this. When the Chiefs, after that interception, right? Mm-hmm. When Or not after, excuse me. After the interception, Niners go three and out. Then the Chiefs punt again, and you get the Darrell Luther fumble. The score is 13 to 6 at, or or 10 to 6 at that point, right? When mm-hmm. the Chiefs scored the immediate touchdown to Marquez Valdez Scantling and it was 13 to 10, could you believe the Chiefs were ahead in that game at that point? Did anybody no. who had watched the game to that point believe that the Chiefs just took the lead to the game? It even when they took been possible at that even point, when they took they the lost. lead, 
even when they took the lead and they went up, when they went up, it didn't feel like they were winning the game. It felt like it felt like it didn't feel because, like they were because, dominating because, the game. Because it's the same thing. And this is why I bring up the Bucks game. Because you start to notice when you're going against Mahomes, the small mistakes that you're making to not capitalize. Because even though you're up 10-0, every one of us in that situation was feeling, oh crap, this team could be up 20 to 0 in this. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, in one drive, one stupid unlucky play, one unlucky bounce for Darrell Luther that turns into a stupid play because Ray Ray McLeod tries to pick it up instead of diving on the ball. You're down three points, and you're in a totally different football game than the one you were playing with the lead with. That's where they lost it, dude. They lost this game when the Chiefs were making mistakes earlier in this game, and they didn't capitalize on them because when they started making mistakes later, the Chiefs capitalized on them, and you weren't going to stop Mahomes after a while, dude. No, Just and there was, there was that eerie feeling during the game where it's like, all right, I don't know how many times we're just going to let Patrick Mahomes get on the field and keep going three and out right. and not being able to respond. Like, that's that's what we're talking about when it's like, if you, you take advantage of Patrick Mahomes in those moments of the game, but if you get all the way down to the end of the game and you're really you're counting on your defense to turn it up, that's what me and Vish are trying to illuminate, where we're saying, no, man. If you if you wait to that moment to make sure that your defense does something against, against Patrick Mahomes, then you're literally inside of the Mahomes zone. That's exact. That's when he turns special. It's oh, it's too late by then when you give Who him the drive. Him then? Who stopped him then? Nobody. Who? Nobody. The only thing that stopped him then. You want me to give you the only example? The one time they played in overtime and they didn't get the ball back. And they didn't change the rules for him in 2018 when that happened, when Talk Tom Brady converted three straight third and tens to go down the field in overtime to score. They didn't change yeah. the rules for him like they did for Josh Allen against him. But that's yeah. the only time in that situation he's been beat. And I mean, he this badly is badly versus Cincinnati. So like, this is what are you what are you what are you what is your what are you betting on there? What are you betting on if you're stuck in a possession for possession game versus Mahomes? Like, do you think we're going to do you think anybody's stopping him there? You lost in that situation. He's always going to win because he's going to get the ball back. I mean, also, I mean, I, I I agree with you, man. It's just I'm gutted, man. I'm gutted. I, I'm dude. I I need I need to go to tomorrow, man. I need to let's get the, let's get these stupid chats going, bro. Let's, I mean, Jeez, we're man. we're not we're not really we're not really being good at hosts right now, but um, yeah, I mean, sorry about that, guys. Green glass field, two dollars. Thank you, man. At least Brock brought it, doggies. That's true, man. Brock had a good game, man. Twenty three for thirty eight. I mean, thirty eight for twenty three, two hundred fifty yards. He didn't play great. He played okay. Good um, enough to win, right? He played definitely good enough to win, man. This is not on him. Um, and then we understand what this team can do. I mean, let's be honest. It's February, and we're having this conversation. So I think we could talk about it now. You know what? Let's do it right now. Because when we have these conversations in August and in September and we start talking about what the team needs to be as far as standard is concerned, everybody starts throwing us into the regular general population with the rest of the NFL. But I think it's important for us to start talking about what we can and what we cannot do now. When we lost to an adequate team, not when we go play the fucking Browns. Or will we go play the Commanders? Or we go dick around with Atlanta? Or we go fuck around with the Panthers? And we say, man, we need to get our run game together, bro. Our offensive line sucks. We need to get this together. And then we get all of this fucking pushback. You guys are haters. Look at what we did with the Jags. Fuck the Jags. We got to start talking about what's good enough against these teams. If you want to talk about being good against the rest of the season, cool, cool. There's a place for that. The couch. Not in the playoffs. Got to get our offensive line together, bro. And for what Brock can give us on the big stage, we know what we got now in Brock. Brock is going to go back in the offseason. He's definitely going to be better. But at the same time, man, we got a processing issue with our quarterback. Ver with our quarterback and our offense, man. Like, I don't know. Like, are we really like the way I see it now? Cause like, I'm all about boundaries. Like I have to like scope it. I need to know, like, 
what's far east and far west, like north and south. And now that I've kind of like got my bearings of like this organization, Jed is cucked. He's never going to put anything. On, he's never going to push anything on Kyle. That's clear. All right. He sat out and said flat out that even losing to the to the Lions would have been a win but, in this season. Way. He was he was also going around this season. And I got some pushback for this. I never clarified this. He didn't give do a damn interview this entire season. And this is just like 2019 when he shows up out of nowhere to now start giving interviews and giving personal stories. Did anybody see Clark Hunt doing that this week? Was there Nobody. any stories about how Patrick Mahomes felt when they were in the locker room down 10 in the Super Bowl last you year? You want to grab the mic now, Jed? No, they didn't, they didn't have a single thing about that. Jed was already starting his America's game before the Niners won the Super Bowl. And that ticked me off, honestly, because every time he talks and he starts tooting his own horn, which when he comes out and talks like this, what he's basically doing is, hey, I'm the guy you guys all criticized early in my tenure. I'm the guy you guys said is suck sucks. Look at me now. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I've built. I mean, in 2019, the guy after one good season in five was sitting there talking about culture and collaboration. Like he knew anything about putting that together. Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch taught him. This is what we do every draft. Right. Right. This is you what we do have, every draft. You oh, if you really want to, if you look at what we usually the- do, if you look at what we usually do, we don't really draft offensive players that high because customarily, this- shut the fuck up. Take it a victory lap. Spreading that bullshit through the organization before we even fucking play these guys. If we would have lost to the Red, to the Lions, we, we've the got season Chris still would have been a success. Really? We've. You want to grab the mic now, Jim? The fuck? All right, coach. Let's get on. Let's get on these supers. Bullshit, man. HR five dollars. Th- thank you. This was always the forty nine ers ceiling. It's why I paid them no bother. Wake me up in 30 more years. 19 to 2024 is the lost generation of Niners fans. I ain't mad at it, bro. Dang y'all, five dollars. Life I put into this, man. This was it. Rebuild begins in the next season. No, Jets thrilled. May not see another Super Bowl for another 10, fellas. Mahomes reload also. That's the answers. That's the answer to your question. Hey, man. Hey, Jed is thrilled. He let us know that Kyle's not going nowhere. He's he has a, you know, there's nothing He's that they can do. He's to Kyle. That's the problem, and that's what people don't want to talk about in this, right? Jed went from bad owner to good owner based on hiring one person to save his butt. Jed didn't know what he was doing until Shanahan came and saved him. So what's Jed going to dictate to Shanahan? What's Jed going to do? Tell Shanahan, hey, I'm going to fire you. Kyle will laugh in his face, go get the next job, and then Jed will be here picking his third coach in three years again. I'm so tired of this country club bullshit. This motherfucking grandstanding. All we had to do was shut the fuck up for two weeks. Hold our water. Two weeks. We're getting all of these Genesis stories about when we knew Brock was the guy. Right. Fuck we knew what here. Debo was doing in the locker room. For, we shouldn't know that. It's and bullshit, like, bro. Oh, he's the owner. Like, yeah, he's the owner. He can do whatever he wants. He can talk when he wants. But at the same time, do you see Clark Hunt doing this? Did anybody see no, Clark Hunt doing this? Not a soul. And with three Super Bowls in five years, can you imagine if Jed York had that success? He would be doing them motherfuckers have, like that. Was happy he would to be doing it, Jerry man. Jones media. He would be doing Jerry Jones media if he had that success to talk about. They was happy to be there, man. They were happy to be there. I saw the looks on their faces. Half of them were drunk or high, fucked up during the interviews. Everybody's cheesing into the goddamn camera. Oh, did you, they ask me any question. Uh, it's beautiful to be here. Going to the Warriors game. Everybody gets a jersey. We ain't one shit. All right, let's get on these supers, coach. Come on. It's okay. HR, five bucks. Thanks. Kyle Levy will not get it done. That was cute. This is 90s Bills punching bag status. Hey, man. This, is, this I heard Chris Sims compare the um, Chiefs this year to the 88 Bills. 
or the 88 49ers, excuse me. Sorry, I read Bills. 88 49ers. That drive at the end for Mahomes was Montana and Miami esque. And I guess if they're the 88 49ers, guess what we are? The 81 and 88 Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Yeah. Who doesn't it's, love uh, that? Remember Sam Weish's legacy? The yeah, man. It's Walsh. uh I I just can't, you know, it's it's my thing. Like I, they work hard. It's a good team. You know, but they do a lot of talking down, man. They really do. They 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 talk in our face a lot. And it's like, man, we put up with a lot for how they talk to us. They lose all. Oh, no accountability. Oh, 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 that's what we needed. You know, they can't stop the run. Oh, we'll get it together. Walking on the field. Oh, oh it's just effort. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. It's what we needed. You ask Kyle anything about the offense, he's a snake, venomous, ready to cut anybody's head off who challenges him. And you put this bullshit out there. And then you got the nerve to be upset while people ask you questions. Got the lead rusher in the NFL. 22 times, 80 yards. 3.6, zero touchdowns. Goddamn father built the wide zone. Now you forget to run. Jeebus, $5, thank you. Game on the line in OT, CMC wearing down the decal. Now nah, let's cut here. Thank you. G.I. Jones, 199, thank you. I don't give a fuck, Kyle, how, Bel how Belichick, Trey Debo going also. Back, going back to the last one, to be fair, I mean, the game kind of came down to second and four, right? And they gave it to CMC and Mike Pinnell. Mike Pinnell, who did any of us mention Mike Pinnell before the game? Mike, Mike Pinnell, Pinnell had a game. Ass. Mike Pinnell, Mike Pinnell's pancake Trent Williams in this. Hello, game. Trent Williams. Meet Mike Pinnell. Pinnell, Mike, Trent, Trent, Mike. Pleased to meet you. <sighs> no, I would not fire Kyle. No, no, it's not. It's not. We're not jumping off the deep end, but we're just we're just frustrated. I, I yeah, I think some of this Kyle's job isn't at yeah, Kyle's job is not up at, at, at stake. I would just, go to Jed. This organization has credibility because of Kyle Shanahan. Jed doesn't know what he's doing. He didn't know what he was shit, doing man. until Kyle Shanahan walked into the door and saved all of this. But that's he's a also pair of why. dockers, man. Jed is a Jed is a pair of dockers, man. That's it. You know I'm saying, uh, David Sante, five bucks. They say some some people would never learn. I guess you could put Kyle in that category because they were already gassed, but Kyle refused to stick with the run. A hundred percent. Michael McCann, five dollars. Kyle is common denominator. Kyle is the common denominator in both these losses versus Kansas City. Where was the run to start the the second half? Fire Kyle and hire Bill Belichick. Kyle is a loser. Look, man, he may be just be an OC. He looked like an OC on the sideline. He looked like he had a deer in the headlines. For me, for me, it's a culture thing, though. When you have an owner singing Kumbaya for two weeks about all the funny stories about your team, your team doesn't feel the urgency. You're celebrating that the season already. He did the same thing in 2019. But when you say these things, it's why it's his team. I remember the chats. Hope y'all are still in here. I, Dude, I remember Eddie well, DeBardo. Y'all are still in here. People, well, well, when we did the show, hold on, Vish. We did the show with Grant, and we were sitting up here talking about that interview. Half of y'all was in it. Half of y'all that's in this chat was in that show and were relentless. Relentless. It's his team. He owns the team. Why are you critiquing him? Who are you? What team do you own, coach? These guys are so negative. I don't even want to hear it. And we were telling you, telling you, it's not a good look. We got one more game left. Jen, you shouldn't be talking like that in public about the team. It spreads the wrong message. We were talking about it all week. 
the the lack of the lack of urgency that that comes from that I, I think that there's a cultural issue and i think people can talk about shanahan all they want the 49ers have credibility right now as an organization because of shanahan under the yorks it's not been very positive outside of the credibility that's been brought by kyle shanahan and john lynch but you also have to be able to hold kyle shanahan accountable and i don't see a person within the 49ers capable of doing that people want a grandstand on eddie debartolo i've read the books about eddie debartolo and bill walsh Bill Walsh, in my mind, is the single greatest football coach ever. He's a football mm-hmm. visionary. Everything he said about football in the 1980s still applies. He wanted yeah. to fire. Eddie DeBartolo wanted to fire that guy. He put yeah. pressure on that guy. He stressed that guy out to the point that that guy quit. A legend. Yeah. And now we're talking about this guy, his 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 nephew. Like, Yeah, he owns the football team, but he's not putting urgency on the team because he doesn't know what he's doing. No. He hired a great coach by hook and crook. He tried. He's happy to be in the room. He's happy to be in the room. He's happy he lucked into Kyle Shanahan. He still still remembers the fact that he did not know what he was doing. He was getting criticized everywhere, and Kyle Shanahan saved him. Yeah. And he's just happy that he saved him. All of that grandstanding. And I'm like, dude, you know what? It's It's not bad enough that we got this shit together, and you're out here shitting the bed doing all other types of shit. But then you want to have this... You want to have this like almost professor like talking to his students type press conference doing all of that grandstanding and talking out of your ass. You don't even know what you're talking about. Can you can you the season the wouldn't even a, a failure and we would have lost to the Lions. That's the message you want to push to the fans. Kyle comes up in two weeks and told me Brock's the guy. Why do we need to know that story? Why? It's ass backwards, man. Let's, it's let's ass backwards. These, let's finish these and get out of here, coach. I, I don't want you having a viral moment tonight. Angel Najera, too late. Angel <laughs> Najera, 199. Man, this hurt. It did hurt. Yeah. yeah. By the way, by the way, I, I will say we've reached the end of this season. This was awesome. We appreciate Great all season. Of you. Goodbye, all of us. It was really fun watching Niners football with all of you. Um, this was disappointing. The coach and I are both obviously, as you can see, as disappointed as any one of you guys. This game was tough, but we really appreciate the support. I've enjoyed all of your contributions and watching the season, all of your commentary, talking football. You guys make this fun for me. I like doing this only because it gives me another group of people to talk football with. I appreciate everybody's contributions, positive or negative. So while we're there, I just wanted to mention that I appreciate every one of you. This was a fun season. Um, and let's try to just make it to tomorrow. I appreciate you toning down and changing the narrative of the stream, Vish. I will. I'll follow suit. Uh, I am privileged. I, I got you, man. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. I'm just frustrated. But this was a great year. Um, and we're going to keep moving. We got draft prep. We got the guys who we need to fix our offensive line. Nice. Like, we got tons of things in store. But, um, you know. Uh, things could be worse. We're sitting here complaining about losing the Super Bowl. We couldn't even have been in the Super Bowl. So for what it's worth, this season is a better season than last year because we actually ended it in the Super Bowl. Um, It sucks at the way we lost it. Um, We got some things down the pike dealing with some serious injuries and Dre Greenlaw and some things down the line. But for what it's worth, I feel blessed. I feel blessed and privileged to be in front of the faithful. I came from the chat. Like uh, right. so you and me, 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 and you were interacting. Where yeah, we're we were chat babies doing this show where it would be myself, Blake, and then yourself and Jamal Armstrong would be the hundred percent. So, so yeah, yeah. So we came from the chat, and um, you know, we be nothing without the engagement and the support of everybody here. So that is that is first and foremost. Like I want to keep that keep that in the from in the forefront. Um, loud boy, uh, boyard. Thank you. Five bucks. Proud of the defense, but the offensive line was exposed and Brock really didn't have to throw. Brock played the best he could with that line. I agree with that 100%. Yeah, uh, but I, I think that there's a nuance to that point because he played the best he could, but this is what we're talking about because sometimes the best you could, you need a little bit more. Sometimes you need a guy to put on the Superman cape that 15 put on. Nobody else has the cape as big as him, but that's why people say you need that high-level quarterback to go beat him in the playoffs. Because as these possessions keep getting down and the margin for error goes, yeah, Brock played fine, but 
we needed another gear from Brock tonight or another gear from somebody else, not just Brock, somebody. <clears throat> yeah, we needed somebody else to pick it up outside of Jawan Jennings. Um, yeah. well, Titus so. Moeller, 199, thank you. You think the D-line takes a step back next season? Yeah. Um, I don't think that we retain Chase Young. Um, Sebastian Joseph Day is not a permanent uh, fixture. We have to see what Drake Jackson looks like coming off of injury. And uh, I don't know if Chris Gibbons is going to stay. Um, so Kevin, we got to Kevin, gotta, Kevin sorry. Receiver from Wake sorry Florida. about that. Kevin Gibbons. Uh, I don't know if he's going to stay or not. So, yeah, our defensive line is in flux and we're going to have to do some serious um, searching to be able to get some real depth. I yeah. kind of feel like we fixed our depth by, ho- by fixed our depth by hook or crook this year. We added three interior. We added three rushers um, to our defensive line this year. Sebastian Joseph Day. Um, Randy Gregory and Chase Young. Um, that was something that they had to do on the fly because, quite frankly, it showed that we could not stop the run, man. Robert Bill was a late contributor, um, if not at all. And, uh, you know, we we tried to get the most that we could out of um, Javon Kinlaw, which he I feel like Javon stepped up for us in when we absolutely needed him. But we need some more interior pressure. Um, we don't know what – they got to yeah, get well, young. I, you took the words right out of my mouth. We don't know what Eric yeah. Armstead is about to be, right? And He's Javon a year Hargrave. older. Javon Hargrave, wrong side of 30. You didn't get the kind of season you would have wanted from him. No. The money you gave him. Chase Young is probably gone. Randy Gregory is probably gone. They don't want to keep that contract. Um, yeah. Kevin Givens is probably going to go get money somewhere this offseason. Maybe you keep Kinlaw, but that's a rotational piece. They're going to have to rebuild this defensive line. I'm getting ready. I'm I'm getting ready for draft prep, prep probably starting tomorrow, and I'm going to get ready to watch a bunch of defensive linemen because this draft is going to be defensive line heavy. They're going to have to rebuild this thing around. Nick we got to rebuild it. Younger, yeah. Younger and ascending players. This year, this year was a bandage. They got veteran players to come in and contribute. You don't put a D-line together on a rotation of veteran names. You need young, hungry players that you can put through in a rotation. You got to go draft them. Beal is one that looks like he's there. We'll see how Drake Jackson looks when he comes back, but but they're going to have to go and rebuild this thing a little bit. This, they put it together for this year. This was kind of their last hurrah with this defensive line. And guess what? They didn't play like how they were supposed to the entire year, but did they, they not? They put it together. They, and they put it together. I got to give it to them. They put it together at the right time. They did. They. they that's one thing. That's one thing. And that's something that I'm glad that you brought up, Vish. The reason why we feel as though that the defensive line is going to have to completely get retooled because even though the defensive line had a phenomenal game today, this is the best they have looked all year, not even close. Mm -hmm. This defensive line did not look like this the entire year. They looked like this in spurts, maybe a quarter, but to have this was 2000. This was 2019. This was 2022, right? This was that type of defensive line where we were stopping the run. We had pressure on Patrick Mahomes. We were holding down the edges. Legendary Nick, but we were looking at 2019 Nick Bosa. Like this, this defensive line, what they did today was what we, if they would have showed us this early in the year, I would have had them going 12 and five. But what they showed today, they saved it for the right time. But what also it also shows, it shows that they can't do it on a consistent level. That's what it also shows as well. And well, it shows I mean, it that took, we need to get it younger. Took, it took them publicly getting, you know, embarrassed about their effort and stuff yes. like that for this to happen. And you know what? I will say this and then we'll, we'll move along so we can get to the supers and everybody can get to sleep and try and sleep mm-hmm. this one off. But um, I like that Steve Wilkes publicly called him out because had they lost to Detroit, they would have put Steve Wilkes as a martyr once again, and he would have been the guy out the door. It was all his fault. So I was glad that he turned the narrative immediately in that week by saying it's unacceptable for his guys to play that way. He challenged them, and they responded. This was as mm-hmm. good as we've seen. Hargrave and Armstead, these guys played their butts off. For a front mm-hmm. four to play that many snaps against Mahomes, come on, man. Come on. They, they played their ass off. They, they, you know so what? Well. They played like they knew they were playing against uh, Patrick Mahomes, and they I hate to say like this. They, they played like they were told the entire week, "You guys got to go win us this game." And yeah, they played to that level. I'm gonna tell you this right now. It also shows that in the NFL, I never thought I'd say this, but the NFL has kind of turned into the NBA, where these guys choose when to play hard. I'll tell you that right now. 
Like they they have not played like this all season. And you could say that, oh, well, it was the Super Bowl bump. No. No. They have not looked, they didn't look like this in the NFC championship game. Like they looked really good. They they have not looked like this all year. So we need to get more depth because if, if we have a defensive line that chooses when to do this, th- that's not good. We need we need younger, to actually go get the younger, guys. Hungry, they need younger, yeah. fitter, hungrier players. Mm-hmm. They need young depth pieces. And dude, Jamie honestly, Allen, where do you go with Eric Armstead? How many years are you going to keep restructuring him? Move his Some, ass. Well, I mean, he's their best. He's arguably he's their best player besides Bosa. But they're in a stuck situation with these veterans, is what they I'm keep saying. kicking the can with them. Well, now and then they gave Hargrave the money. So now, are you going to keep both Hargrave and Armstead like two thirty plus defensive tackles making that We're getting much fucking money? top heavy? Right, We're getting top We're heavy. Start, that's and so yeah, we'll talk about all of this in the off season. Let's continue. Jamie Allen, one ninety nine. Thank you. Kyle didn't blow. Digame, will his hold change things? The game. I thought he was about to say Digame. Sorry, the Braden. Oh well, yeah, the Braden Willis. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Thing. Well, George was out hurt on that play. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know. Kyle also called the seven-step drop on play but, action with... But, but uh, look, Marcus Valdez-Scantling made one of the stupidest plays I've ever seen by ruining his forward He should have just stand on the ground. Six yards. Yeah. Do any of, are any of us ever going to talk about that play again? No. We, we they won. talk about these one negative plays and stuff like, oh, this didn't happen because this happened. But if you overcome it, there's a lot more plays there to overcome it. You overcome it, man. I'm so gutted, man. Adam, $5. Thank you. I'm wrong. I am wrong. Should Kyle not have called? Am I wrong? Should Kyle not have called timeout right before the last touchdown Mahomes threw to get the defense set up correctly? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But I mean, it was close at that point. That was you a discretion. They were gonna get the, you didn't know if they were going to snap it before overtime. It was cl- or right. It was close mm-hmm. with that. It, it was before a bang bang situation. Play, they had one play. I think it was at two seconds play clock, three seconds clock when they snapped it. <sighs> Todd Tran, two dollars. Thank you. Agree. Shanny scheming has holes when defense blitzes. I mean, Brock did good against the blitz today as well. The Spagnolas just drew it up. Adam, five dollars. Thank you. On third and four with two minutes left in the game, Kyle doesn't protect Brock. We lost the game right there. I mean, that was a great blitz call. If anybody can good. tell me that they I didn't even see that coming. coming on that play, if I didn't anybody see that can watch that, tell me. And without the result, they can give me any indicator that they knew the nickel was coming up the B gap on that play. You got me because I yeah. that was an unbelievable call and an unbelievable play by McDuffie. And he threw hot, too. McDuffie got yeah, up on him and disrupted it. That was the other thing, right? Batted balls. What an impact in this game. They batted Purdy's balls down a lot. Purdy's balls and then, down you know what's funny? Shout out, out to Tom Jensen lot. because Tom Jensen actually gave that point on Number the favorite review. Batted balls. batted balls. Yeah. Jimmy Allen, thank you. You guys are very right about the situational football. Yeah. They 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 just knew what to do in those areas. They were they they were one beat ahead of us, um, you know. But that's what happens when you got guys too busy trying to carry out a scheme instead of playing football. Todd Tran, two dollars. Jed too busy with his New English Football Club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Serenity twenty ducks. Thank you. Please go get a drink on me. Vish buy one for Coach. Kyle makes me so meek and freaking mad with his schemes. Moody missed it, or we would have won outright. The bl- I blame Kyle Shanahan. He he failed to use our weapons. Serenity, I agree with this, but I don't want to necessarily beat up on Jake. Man, Jake avenged himself. First of all, all right, you miss on the PAT, cool, but you get the Super Bowl record and. In- <laughs> on uh, field goals like and then you come right back and put us up to win in 53 i mean i don't think you could have asked but like if you're if if you looked at all of the kicks that jake could have made and missed today and and somebody told you all right well at least pick one pick one kick that you had he has to miss you would have picked the pat and guess what? Guess what? It's still down four. Does anybody think? I still think they could have lost that game in re- regulation. Maybe Mahomes goes and gets a touchdown. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say. Mm-hmm. But like you Thank said, you for Moody, the donation, Moody, Serenity. Moody, Moody is this amazing ro- um, emotional roller coaster where he makes kicks that when you put context to the situation, you say are decidedly clutch. And then he also misses something in every game that makes you want to pull your hair out. <sighs> Stingray 499. Thank you. 
How big will the diamonds be for our NFC Championship? They, they don't put coach? banners up. Remember, they don't put banners up for NFC Championship games. That's what we don't, man. I mean, it, it's thing right. This one sucks, man. I mean, that interview, it, it bothered me. It didn't feel good. I didn't like it. And the timing of it, it felt like he was just, it felt like he was taking a victory lap before we even won the race. I didn't like it at all. And was, uh, But the problem is it's because of the victory lap for people who have followed him and followed his career and followed who he used to be, we feel that the victory lap starts to feel like him being like, hey, remember me? The guy you guys all said was an idiot? I'm really smart now. Give me my credit. Give, give me, yeah. Look at me. Dude, what did you do? You hired you do? one guy that saved your life. He saved your bacon. He's the guy that's making it all work. And he I don't has think Jed knows. Job. I don't think Jed knows we will respect him more if he just shut the fuck up. Just get, just back away. You yeah, own the team. You signed the checks. But you know what? That's the price of being a billionaire. Nobody likes you. That's a fair trade-off. It's a fair trade-off. If you get to be a billionaire, nobody gets to like you. So just 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 fade you away. Be born into being a billionaire, too. Come on. <laughs> Serenity five dollars. Thank you. Nine pro, pro bowlers equals zero equals Zippo. Yeah, yeah. Todd Tran five dollars. Thank you. Let coach keep on going. It makes me feel better. We jinxed when Jed paid for employees to go to the Super Bowl. Yes, rebuild. Some should happen this offseason. Yeah, year I year early better. Yeah, I mean that stuff right there. It's like we. I don't know what we. Why do we get such a kick out of like? Pushing this narrative as we're some big family and not a professional organization. Like, it's like he ha we always push out this narrative as if, like, all oh, the, the boys Niners take care of you better. The Niners do it better, right? Because that's yeah. what this was. Who cares? Like, it's really cool that he did that, but it didn't need to be a public story that the Niners are doing it better than everybody else because they're taking yeah. every employee. Is it, and by the way, did the Chiefs, I'm sure the Chiefs, uh, well, they probably go to them every year, so now it's they pick and choose. Yeah, they don't give a fuck. The Chiefs you don't care. Year, yeah, right? We got Chris Jones saying he's scared of Trent Williams in media day. We and he has to pray. Yours. Right, right. He has to pray. And they've, they've done this two times in a row, and that's how they're talking during media week. Meanwhile, the Niners, fa Niners owner is coming out here being like, hey, guys, you should have seen in 2020 a season we didn't win anything. Debo Samuel was shaking during this moment. Like, dude, who cares? Who Gives cares during Super Bowl week about that story? Yeah. Serenity, $5. Thank you again. Billionaire owners seem to seem pretty happy to be in the Super Bowl news. I hate them. This sucks. Yeah. I mean, that's just what it is. I mean, could you not let us know that it's really about the money without letting us know it's about the money? We all know that the win and the loss actually matters to us. But when you come on there, you come on there with this cheese, with this shitty and grin on your face, because you know that you've already gotten two home gate, two home playoff games in the bag, and your entire team is going to be within the Super Bowl. We already know that the cash is checked, Jed. The check is cashed. Right. It's like, come on, man. Indulge us a little. And, and by the way, if he was talking about this team coach and he was just like, this team has worked so hard. It's so cool that this team take winning it, all that. The principle of him talking, they're right. He is the owner of the football team. He can do what yeah. he wants. It's this stuff. What is Debo shaking in that moment then? Or Brock Purdy, Kyle saying this about him then? Like, why do we need to share these things now before the biggest game? It almost feels like we're already celebrating. We've already he's replying won. because he's trying to give us anecdotal stories, but he doesn't understand that we don't we're looking at not the story. We're looking at your point of view. These aren't firsthand stories. You're a fly on the wall. Like these are stories that should come out about players. You're right. a fan. And be, right. And it should be coming from players about Debo in a moment that is celebrating Debo, not before the team is in the Super Bowl. You you got caught up being a fan. We were one game away from the game that we needed, and you started monologuing. You Disney villain. Okay, okay. All right, coach. All right, coach. You had you had them right in your sights, tied up on the on the on the railroad tracks, 
And then you start monologuing about how long you've wanted this win and how hey, much if, you deserve if, if, it. Jerry, and then you turn around if, and they're gone. If Jerry talked like Jed York before this game, would people react to it differently? Oh, my God, yes. If Jerry Jones was this complimentary, complimentary of his team before because a Super Bowl they, but and said that the season stop, right? didn't matter before they won, people would think that Jerry officially was senile. They're right. like, all right, and, it's time this, to get Jerry but committed. Is, but this is the kind of stuff, right? Like, why would Jerry tell this story about Dak or this? This is the kind of stuff people question about him, right? Like, people say it's fair. It's, it's fair amongst everybody to question Jerry Jones that way. Why don't we question it when Jed York does it? Yeah. Hey, hey, roll out, Mac. I, I don't don't comment. Him. Don't comment and say, just, just leave. No, no, that's okay. He can comment. That's fine. I get it. I, I, like, dude, I, I'm ready to go to sleep, man. I'm ready to sleep this off. This was a bad dream. I'm going to move on in the real world. Nobody Kyle will know McCann, this. $5, thank you. Kyle gave up the biggest lead in Super Bowl history to the Patriots as an OC. He's a loser when it comes to big games. We're doomed to repeat this trend. Another double-digit lead, a double-score lead in the uh, – two-score lead in the playoffs. Done. Danielle, $5, thank you. Uh, this was it. Mahomes, Love, and the Lions are all reloaded. Murray getting Harrison Jr. Stafford reloading. Maybe another 10 onions, gents. I don't know, man. Let's just, yeah, I don't, we'll let's see. hope not. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. get there. We'll get there. Yeah. Dan Danielle, uh, Debo is trash. I agree with Grant. Trade him and see what we can get. Hope someone make, takes his contract. Isn't he due to make like $27 million he next is. year? He is, he is. But I have two points about Debo in this game. And I, I don't think Debo played well in this game. McDuffie had his number, so I'll preface it with that. One is the hamstring, dude. That I, didn't, I couldn't believe he came back into that game because it legitimately looked like he pulled his hamstring on that play. The way he stopped, non-contact, the way he went down. like He just went like, down oh, like yeah, a load yeah, of, like looked, a sack of potatoes. He just went like, down. Okay, yeah, it's over for Debo. So he came back and played. And then, by the way, by the way, this pissed me off. The first third down after Debo Samuel gets hurt, they go to Debo Samuel against leverage. He's running a dagger route, which is an in route, in route. against Trent McDuffie, who's playing inside leverage. So he has to go out, fake out, and beat and Trent McDuffie who has face. leverage on him. With a bad hamstring, and that's who you go to on third down right after this hey, guy hey, looks like he's not coming back hey, into the game. So that, that hey, pissed me off. But that's what it's not even who you go to, but that's what you called. Kyle called it. He called it, Vish. Right. No, like, but that's that's what I'm saying when you go to him. Like that the yeah, play was sorry, designed yeah. to go to him, right? And no, I thought deciding, you were talking about Brock right. as opposed no, to Kyle. No, sorry. No, no, yeah. no. If if you're running a dagger concept, he's he's gotta throw the ball there. He, exactly. It doesn't matter who's playing receiver, the ball's gotta go there. It's just why corrected. are you doing that to Debo, right? Why are you doing that to Debo? And then the other part of this with um Debo's contract in this particular game, the way Debo always works is they gotta get him going in games. They gotta let Debo feel it because Debo is not one of these players that you can measure his impact on simply the statistics, or you can measure his impact by he does these things X and his X's and O's. There's also an intangible feel for Debo's confidence and Debo's energy and Debo's physicality that makes an impact on his team. And they didn't get Debo going early in this game before he got hurt. It felt mm -hmm. like Debo was getting cardio going in motion for a large portion of this game. They didn't use Debo's energy. Like, when they played the Chiefs in 2019, they went to Debo so much early, it felt like you could feel Debo in that game. Did we ever feel Debo's presence in this game? Yeah, there was one end around where he finished on... Uh... What's that? Uh, what's 21, the safety? Mike Edwards. Mike Edwards. Mike he Edwards. Right that, he ran yeah, right he ran through. right through him. Like, there were plays, man. Um, but uh, all in all, I just didn't. to get him going. Yeah, it wasn't. It was disjointed. It was very disjointed. Ah, oh, man. It just it sucks, man. This and then Phil, Phil Bur Filiberto Dom Dom Dominguez asked the million-dollar question, dude. This, this right, is the million dollar question of the game. Why were they going at McDuffie and Sneed so much? Especially McDuffie. McDuffie. And he was having a field day. They, they, uh, dude, he's played like this all year. He's a first team all pro corner. He's a terrific player in coverage. He's terrific versus the run. He's terrific blitzing. Why take bam, the chances? Bam. They do this to every receiver group. They do this to everybody, him and Sneed. Bam, bam. I love the avatar too, the above the rim avatar. Uh, yeah, looks good. I like that. Bam, bam, one ninety nine. Thank you. Wilkes was bad in the second half and worse in OT. That's cap. That's cap. 
in the second Every half, the coordinator is going to be bad in that. Situation. Yeah, I mean, you as the, the game, you got to look at this in a Super Bowl game, man. You don't just shut Patrick Mahomes down. He gradually finds his way. You got to look at this like basketball. You don't just shut down Jordan. You hold them to 20. OK, you don't just shut down Kobe. You're happy with Kobe going for 30 because he can go for 60 if you don't play yeah. defense right. So you got to understand what we were going against tonight. For what we did on defense, we more than did our job. 22 points on offense. They held them to 25 points with 15 minutes of overtime added to a 60-minute game. For 75 minutes, they held Patrick Mahomes to 25 points. They got five quarters and held Patrick Mahomes to 25 points. This is not on the defense. I'm sorry. This is not on the defense. Angel Najera in 199, thank you. Do you guys think Abiza... The windows is closed. Do you think Ibiza, the window is closed? I think he's talking about maybe the Super Bowl window. Is there something? The Super Bowl window, maybe. Um, no, because the NFC is weak. We got to see what they are. And that's what I meant earlier on when I was saying, like, um, you know, we get a lot of pushback on what this team should be versus other teams, but then we, we don't necessarily see that against other against lesser opponents. Um, sometimes we use that as an opportunity to hop on um, narratives or, or points that are trying to be made. But, you know, this team isn't going to play against a team that can run the ball. Um, all the time. We'll see. Um, we'll see. They got a full off season to make moves. We'll see what they do, and then we'll reevaluate where they are and see where their yeah. Window is I, I think I think it's it's I think it's too early to say if any windows have been closed. Yeah. We're still a very talented team, by, and, and the NFC the way, is not that good to be real. I'll, I also want to hammer one more point on Wilkes Go one ahead. last time. It's Go the ahead. turnover point, dude. First drive of the half, you get an interception, you get the ball in plus territory, and you go three and out. You don't, don't do that respond. stuff against Patrick Mahomes. That's the dagger. That's the stuff. That's the stuff right there. The the turnover where we get the drive and and we go right back and Christian McCaffrey doesn't even touch the ball. That's when you have to challenge Kyle being a genius. That's when you have to say, "Now wait a minute, dude. We just picked off the greatest quarterback on planet Earth, and we're plus yardage moving down, and you don't give your One best player start. the ball." One false. No, I I I even go further than that. One false start seems to throw off your entire drive. Everything one guy makes one mistake, one false start, drive is done. It's got to be out. flawless for Kyle to be okay. Field position. Next thing you know, they get a turnover. What do they do? Right after their turnover, they take the lead in the football game. They go up 13 to 10, the immediate play after the turnover. What are we doing here? What are we doing? Yeah. How does this game look when Jair Brown intercepts him? Are we not crowning Steve Wilkes at that point? If you go up 17 to 6 at that point? <sighs> this fucking sucks. All right. Did we have uh foul Kyle? Lamar. I don't think Kyle's job is in question, especially no, with no, Jed no, professing no. his love for him. Um What's Jed Serenity do without Kyle. Exactly. Serenity two dollar. Sorry, I got coach upset again. So hey, mm -hmm. Serenity, it's not even you, ma'am. Yeah, thank it's, you. Just, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Adam, five dollars. Thank you again. If Kyle can win a Super Bowl with this superstar roster, if Kyle can't win a Super Bowl with this Super Bowl roster. He will never win. Kyle's just got to pray that one day he lucks into Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. One day. I mean, he's got to, I mean, wait. you got to wait for Brock Purdy's story to be over. But I'm um, at this stage of the game. Kyle needs somebody well, to win no, it for him. Well, 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 it, it does reevaluate a little bit because the way I thought Purdy played today, I thought if you looked at 19, you looked at 20 or 20, 19 or 21, and I looked at Garoppolo, I thought the way Purdy played today would have been good enough to win both of those games. I was wrong, because the game played out. If, Purdy, if Brock Purdy would have played in yeah. 2019 with what we saw in today's Super Bowl, we would have won the Super Bowl. Yeah, we would have won. We would have won. But, but would yeah. the game have played out the same way? Now I'm I'm having some questions. I don't think it's that I mean, and then for what it's worth, that Chiefs defense is very good, but they weren't they they left much to be desired in the run game. No, but but they were also that was Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, Mitchell Schwartz. True. Yeah. Good job. Cause cause S G uh Z G ten dollars. Thank you. Did y'all see how McKibbitz missed jumps completely and didn't have Purdy? Didn't give Purdy enough time to see a wide open Ayuk in the end zone in the third and four. He completely missed the block. Shaking my head. Yes, I also saw Jawan Jennings get missed on the China route on the outside. That would have been a, a touchdown. Out, that, yeah. yeah, that would have won the game. I mean, the offensive line definitely didn't do Brock any favors this game. They didn't. 
Um, that's why when you get an O line like ours, man, where you know they struggle when it comes to one on one situations, particularly in pass coverage, that's why you got to get cut down the splits and get them moving forward, go downhill. I thought that's what Kyle he, he fooled. This one hurts because he fooled me. I really thought that he got it. I did. When I saw Elijah Mitchell, Elijah Mitchell getting cur- carries early, I was like, dude, this is it. This is it. He's starting to get it. He's starting to understand that you just got. Or even when he got, kept his poise when they went down thirteen ten or yes thirteen ten and the way they drove the ball through McCaffrey, all of that. I was like, oh, Kyle. Knows. I was like, yes. I was putting on a show right now. Yes, and he just abandoned it. So he got cute, started trying to put it on Brock. And I'm like, you don't put it on Brock in the Super Bowl. Not in the Super Bowl, bro. Uh, you know what? I'm going to sleep good tonight. I'm, I'm, I, you are? I'm not, dude. This is so disappointing. The only, like, like, the solace for me is the fact that at least this time I don't have to go to school. Going to school after Niners losses was always the hardest thing. Um, my phone's already been blowing up galore with, you know, a few condolences, but the condolences are somewhat patronizing. I I love football season. I'm really sad that it's ended. It's the best part of the year for me. I love watching football with you, coach. I love watching football with everybody here in the chat. This is really disappointing. Um, Yeah. This I one mean, sucks. This will this will be one that, you know, it'll it, it's going to stick with me. And I, I have nothing to do with the results that happen on that field. And yet, emotionally i'm yeah yeah man hey man you know it feels the way it should and you sunday know. night everybody's keep it responsible make sure we're getting to work safe and sound on mondays let's not i'm calling out right? i'm calling out you're calling out dude i was cons- yeah, i was thinking work. calling out for this show i'm not gonna lie like hey coach yeah. just picked up picked up and yo, yo, you would have if you would have left me to do this on my own, dog, I would have never forgiven you. I, I reached a point. I reached a point when that ball and I could feel that they were about to win and that reality was setting in, like with the time dwindling and the Kelsey play and they're getting yeah. so close. I was like, oh, my stomach felt sick. I haven't even eaten dinner today. Like I skipped dinner. Ugh. Oh, bucket. This one, this one hurt right because now. it just felt like, huh? Oh, I said the guy who commented that he said he's going to work right now. Yeah. He's already I'm, grinding. I look, I'm on my way to Nurk now. I hear you, man. Like I, 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 this one sucks because I felt like everything was falling in our place. Everything was falling for us. Right? I felt yeah, like I know. Um the team, everybody was healthy. Uh you know, game, and for what it's the worth, game, dude, the game played out exactly like all the things we wanted them to happen in this game for the Niners to win happened. It happened. The D line showed out. The defense played up to their potential. Oh. The offensive line, like they were playing well early in this game. They were able to run the football early in this game. They had the lead, right? We talked about how much the lead was important because Kansas City was so comfortable playing ahead in the playoffs. Like all of these things. This is a huge, this is a goaded comment. Even during the game, and I, I listened to this, Tony Romo in so many ways was trying to be so nice. But Tony Romo, I don't know how many artful ways Tony Romo found a way how to say, run the ball. Right. Like, like, I'm going to run it again here. We only yeah. got no, no game, but I'm going to run it again. We got to show that we're sticking with it. Yeah. Like, why we got to keep it going. There you go. Run the ball. Why don't they just run the ball? Hey, you know, San Francisco's really shown that they can dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Why don't they run the ball? Tony Romo was mentioning it all game. Coach, you know what makes it worse? It's not the number of runs. It's the situations where we felt like they could run the ball. And we and they didn't. About it, right? It, but it's not just that they didn't. They would have negative plays, which would then make the next play, right? Like, we just had the back and forth like 40 minutes ago, and I was talking about the drive that you were saying they couldn't run the ball. And I Agreed, was like, well, look, look, at this, look at this situation. Yeah, he is normally annoying. But I was like, look at this situation. How are they supposed to run the ball there? And you were like, yeah, they got themselves into situations where they weren't able to run the ball by not running the ball. Yeah. And that's really what happened. It wasn't just that they would miss these situations to run the ball. It was that the next play or the play that they didn't run it on would turn into second and 15. And now you can't even run it. Now you're in a situation where the drive already feels done because second and 15 for your offense, you're never overcoming that. 
Mm -hmm. Look, man, it was a frustrating day. Finished off the season 12 and six, lost in the Super Bowl, one game further than we did last season. The caveat for this year is that we may lose a couple of guys, but this year, thank God, we got a fucking draft. Uh, got to clean up this offensive line. Got to see what coaches are staying and what coaches are going. And uh, get these exit interviews going and get ready for the draft. And uh, hey, man, there's no other place. There's no other team I'd rather be. Right? Yeah. I, so. I think I think you have to do some soul searching because they've put together a team as good as you can put together. And there's a team in the league that's just not good enough to um, that you're not good enough to beat. And I, I think we're at a point in the modern NFL that you got to find a way to beat number 15. And they've put together as good a team, as good a situation as you can. And that's not good enough to beat 15. And so maybe you need to restart this process a little bit. Maybe you got to a point where good enough is good against everybody else, but not worth versus number 15. Because they they lost basically the same game in a lot of different ways four years apart. Yeah. Bam Bam, 999, thank you. Tony Romo also said it wasn't smart to play zero coverage. Yeah, he set two defenders 100%. yards beyond on the first yard down marker, playing scared in Otai. What the hell games were you were you all watching? Hey, man. He played zero. I, he played zero once on one. Yeah, and Kyle down, called a timeout. He brought pressure. Well, on the second one, he called pressure, but he played zero on one third down that Romo played, played zone. And if he played zone on that play and they still converted it, would you have come back and said, oh, he should have called this, he should have called that? Like, come on. Come on. Bam like, just wants to spend his money. Why are we not talking money? about them not dealing with pressure on, you know, third and four, nickel pressure? They How many times did they bring the nickel versus Lamar? Why oh, didn't you have hurts. an answer versus a nickel pressure? Huh? Yeah. And I'm telling you as someone that says, that was a great design blitz. But we're I hate this. And we do this only to Steve Wilkes on the 49ers staff. We take one call or we take one moment against the best quarterback in the NFL. I'm giving you love, Bam Bam. Just to show, I, I completely disagree with you, but you know what? You know, you, I, I'd agree. I, you're putting your chats in here, so I'm, I'm, I'm showing you love. I'm showing you love. Even though I don't think he's a bum, I'm, giving, I'm being honest. I'm, I'm, you know, it's a democracy in here. Everybody's word is, everybody's word is the same. Everybody's word matters in here, even though I don't agree. So, Samuel Bonilla. Samuel Bonilla, thank you. $10. Wolf going through a breakup and now this, haha! I know it's silly, but man, I really needed this. So disappointed. Yeah, everybody, uh, everybody yeah, needed dude, it I'm too. Sorry. Hope everything's okay with you, Sam Bonilla. Please reach out to anybody if you need um, anyone to talk to. Feel free to reach out to me if you need somebody to talk to. But I hope everything's okay. I, I understand. I it, people who don't understand football fandom think it's you know fickle. They think it's funny that you're invested in something like this. And I get that it seems so irre ir irreasonable or and irresponsible to be this invested in a team that you have no control of and all of that. But it, it's it, I understand the pain. I understand how much it hurts. It's hard. You put so much into it. Your life for seven months revolves around this team. You do everything, um, you know, trying to watch this football team, rooting for this football team. When the season ends and it ends with this disappointment, it's really hard. So if anybody needs anybody to talk to, I'm here. Please reach out to me. Please reach out to the coach, anybody. Um, I understand how hard this one is. It's not unreasonable. This one fucking sucks, man. All right. So, look. Uh, hold on. Let me just make sure. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody's super chats. Neil Picania, thank you. 199. Devastated right now. Don't know how to feel. Just feel. That's the best advice I got for you. If you don't know how to feel, just feel. Don't hide away from any emotion that you have. Let it out and just understand that, you know, emotions are like waves on the shore. All you can do is just observe them and watch them come onto the shore and come back out. And whether those are good, bad, horrible emotions, you understand that you cannot ride the wave of those emotions. And you have to understand that sometimes the tide is high and the tide is low, but the strength is in observing the tide, not being a part of it. So all emotions are real. All emotions should be validated, but it's not okay to partake in those emotions. So it's cool, man. This too shall pass. We'll be all right. Yeah. We'll be all right. It's, yeah. 
Ne- next um, one, you missed one, and then I think we should get out of here. Sam Bonilla again. I gotta. I got. It's already near midnight. I gotta wake up for work tomorrow. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I already got all o'clock. these. I, 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 didn't Thanks, call Vish. In, I didn't call in sick like somebody else. Yeah, it's Sam Vish, Sam Vanilla, thanks uh, for $5. Thanks, Vish. All good. I appreciate the sentiment. Thank you both for awesome content all year. Thank you, guys. Thank so, you. hey, man, it's been real, guys. Um, I'm not mad at you right now. I'm, I, I, you know, if you're done being a fan, you know, get at me when you feel like coming back. I ain't mad at Dude, you. I, I, I feel you. I've been there. I've, this one I've, sucks. This, yeah, I've been in that same sentiment. I, I um, but uh, hey guys, you know, maybe the boombox era is over. Maybe it's time for us to go ahead and get a new get a new script. Hey man, and uh, I ain't mad. We ain't mad. So look. We we miss Christian Rocha. We got one more, buddy. Um, and one more, one more super here. chat. Yes, sir. Three. Sorry, Super Bowl. Christian. He's, he's asking a deep question too. Three Christian. Super Bowl losses, four NFC Championship game L's. How do we one move forward? One foot at a time, buddy. One foot at a time. I mean, how are babies made? I don't know. Like I just thought it's just like you know, what's the meaning of life? Who knows? I I'm trying to rack my head. Yeah, he's the babies. guy, Chris. Brock's the guy. This wasn't on Brock. He's the guy. He's the guy. He can get it done. We went there with him. We rode him there. You know, I, there should be no Brock slander. He's the guy. It ain't on Brock. This one's on Kyle. And part of it's on Kyle because of Brock. Because Brock is doing everything Kyle wants. So, hey, man. Yeah, we're, we're crazy if we expected, you know. I don't know. I don't know. What hey, man. I don't even know how to end this one. But this is the coach. This is Vish. This one has been real. We had an amazing year. We didn't get the we didn't get the result that we wanted, but we still handled business. And uh, thank you, you guys, so much to all of you guys. You guys, yeah, rock. man. And when you You're guys get a chance, subscribe to the channels. Yeah, go ahead, Vish. Yeah, I was just gonna say when you get a chance, subscribe. That's a great point. Um, mm-hmm. The reason for me personally, I'm I'm not always the biggest fan of doing content and for sure there's i I don't want to call it like anxiety but there's definitely a nervousness when you have to put yourself out there and speak um to people in front of a camera i have been fully supported by each and every one of you since i've started doing this you guys give me reason to continue doing it and yeah it sucks that the niners lost the super bowl i just wanted to thank all of you guys for um how much you've supported us how much you've supported this show how much you've come and talked to us and given your opinions and shared thoughts and allowed our show to work after the games. It's been really fun. We appreciate all of you. Um, And we'll be back next season and hopefully we'll be getting hyped up together next year. Now we're moving straight into draft season. Um, And yeah. Hey man, it is what it is, man. Another year. Bang, bang, nine again. Stay faithful. This is the coach. This is Vish. Stay low and keep your feet moving, man.